Hey guys, in this video we're going to be resolving a lot of the myths and misinformation surrounding the Red 9 broom handle C96, the pistol with a lot of nicknames. Now probably one of the first things that I did whenever I bought the Red 9 C96 is that I googled, you know, Red 9 C96 and uh, kind of read all the different websites and all the information on the forums about the Red 9 C96, um, you know, just to kind of see, you know, what, what the internet has to say. You know, I, I assumed with so many websites talking about this pistol that they were giving out the correct information. However, when I actually, you know, picked up a book and started reading about the C96, um, especially with uh, Mauro Baudino's excellent book here, Paul Mauser, His Life, Company, and Handgun Development, 1838 to 1914. Um, he goes over the C96 pretty well in this book. Uh, the book's not dedicated to just the C96, but it covers a lot of the, the different variations of it, including um, actual documents from the, the Paul Mauser archive about the Red 9 C96. And it's really interesting how the actual Mauser documents just completely contradicts all the information on the internet. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm a little surprised how wrong the internet was about the Red 9 C96. And that's kind of why I wanted to make a video here today. So I thought, who better than Mauro Baudino himself to come onto the show to talk about some of the documents surrounding the, the Red 9 C96 that's available in the Paul Mauser archive. He's a curator of the Paul Mauser archive, so he actually has access to a lot of these original documents. Um, not only that, but there's some great information in this book about it. He's also the co-author of a couple more books, uh, like this one here, The Parabellum is Back. Um, it's a good book that covers, like, Mauser pistols after World War II, which is something that's you know, not widely known or talked about. So, Mauro, thanks so much for coming on the show. Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. So, one of the things I read online was that the Red 9 was a Prussian contract. Is that true? Was it really just a Prussian contract? We cannot really talk about a contract, or at least there is no a, uh, evidence of a contract in the original Mauser documentation. Most probably, we can talk uh, about an order issued by the Prussian Rifle Testing Commission located in uh, Spandau, Berlin. Initially, there was a request to develop uh, the Mauser C96 using the 9mm ammunition, 9mm parabellum ammunition, like uh, the uh, Luger P08. The uh, Mauser uh, um, original sale books uh, trace all the deliveries of the uh, C96 in 9mm parabellum to several depots in Germany. Uh, these depots uh, belong to the different kingdoms. Therefore, we can state that uh, although the um, order was issued by uh, GPK Spandau, um, the uh, order was then for all German kingdoms. Another thing that I read was that the Red 9 was a contract from 1916. Now, is that really 1916? Did that have anything to do with, like, uh, Mauser's fiscal year? Let me introduce before the concept of uh, fiscal year in Mauser. Uh, for example, if we mention uh, the fiscal year 1916 and 1917, we are considering the period between September 1916 and August 1917. So, starting from now, every time we are referring to a fiscal year in Mauser, we are referring to a period uh, between September and August. As mentioned in my previous answer, uh, there is uh, no evidence in the Mauser documentation of a contract or orders for um, the Mauser C96 pistol in 9mm parabellum caliber. But, uh, authors that had the opportunity to uh, analyze and study the German military archive reported that uh, an um, order was issued to Mauser in July 1917. This is absolutely realistic uh, compared with the data available in the Mauser sale books. In fact, the uh, first sale of this uh, pistol are reported in the Mauser sale books in January 1918. It means five or six months later the order of the pistols. And this is absolutely realistic. Um, uh, as mentioned, the delivery started in January uh, 1918 and this allows me to introduce shortly uh, uh, and to describe how the bookkeepers in Mauser were used to write the um, sale of the C96 pistol in the sale books. 
In uh, April 1897, uh, we see the first uh, uh, Mauser C96 uh, reported in say books. This because in uh, April 1897, uh, there was the uh, official start of delivery and sale of the Mauser C96 pistol. And um, the bookkeepers were used to write this in the um, sale book books using uh, the model of the of the pistol. For example, for the ten shot, they were used to write the equivalent in German language of uh, ten loader pistol. Uh, for the six shot, six loader pistol, and for the twenty shot, twenty loader pistol. And the caliber was omitted, so there, there is no evidence of the caliber in the uh, sale note. You can only find the uh, caliber for the rare Mauser C96 uh, that were chambered using the uh, 9mm export caliber. In this case, the bookkeeper uh, add also 9mm uh, to the description of the sale. So by default, the bookkeeper assumed that the pistol was in 7.63 mm. This until uh, January 1918. In January 1918, um, the bookkeepers started adding the uh, caliber to, uh, to the pistol. Therefore, you can find 10 loader 7.63 mm or 10 loader 9 mm. This because, starting from now, there was a sale of two different uh, models. And um, the first sale uh, of a um, C96 uh, uh, in 9mm Parabellum is dated 5th of January uh, 1918. And the, the pistol were delivered to, do, to two German depots, the depot in Munich and the depot in Erfurt. And uh, 20 days later, the 25th of January 1918, pistols were delivered to four different depots. Uh, in addition to Munich and Erfurt, there was the depot of Dresden and the depot of Ludwigsburg. Was the contract for 150,000? How many were actually ordered and, and how many were completed? The same autos that inform us that uh, the order from GK GPK was issued to Mauser in July 1917, they inform us that this order was for 200,000 pistols. But uh, um, this number was never reached. Uh, the cost of the pistol was 80 rage marks per unit. We've done a, an interesting study considering uh, the pistol sale in the, uh, in the period 1918, Jan January 1918, August 1922. So we are covering uh, the end of the war and the first year of the Weimar Republic. These data are very interesting and uh, I'm going to read this data from the Paul Mauser book. So for the fiscal year 1917-1918, but we know that the delivery started in January 1918, Mauser delivered 30,000 units. In the fiscal year 1918-1919, Mauser delivered 64,952 units. In the fiscal year 1919-1920, Mauser delivered 13,409 13, units. In the fiscal year 1920-1921, Mauser delivered 14,301 units. In the fiscal year 1921-1922, Mauser delivered 11,190 units for a total of 138,852 units. This is very interesting. So uh, we have evaluated almost 139,000 uh, pistols delivered from January 1918 up to August 1922. And uh, uh, this is very, um, let's say, realistic because we know that uh, the uh, serial number, the maximum serial number of the uh, Mauser uh, C96 in 9mm parabellum caliber is in the range 140,000. Therefore, we found uh, a similar value considering the sale in this specific period. 
it is interesting to note that uh, um, the, um, the sale of the uh, 9mm C96, C96 pistols continued also in the Weimar Republic, uh, uh, at least until uh, 1922, but maybe also later, despite uh, the Treaty of Versailles. That is really interesting. Thanks, thanks so much for coming on the show, Mauro. I really appreciate it. You are welcome anytime. So one of the services that Mauro and the Paul Mauser Archive provide is a certification program for your Mauser pistols. So if you have a, a neat Mauser pistol, like a, like a Mauser made Luger or something like that, um, I'll put a link in the description that you can go to to check out the certification process. I think he charges about 50 euros, something like that. Um, he gives you a nice you know, PDF of a, uh, of a certificate. He actually goes into the archive. He looks at the original documents. He can tell you basically all the information that's available about your exact pistol down to the serial number. I think it's important we support you know, authors and the Paul Mauser archive to, to keep this information alive for future generations. So if you wanna know more, just go to the link in the description. So to recap some of the information that Mauer just gave us, the Red 1996 was not a Prussian order. It was just sort of a, a general German military order. These went to many different German states. This was not just a Prussian pistol contract. So the Red 9 had its own serial number run. So it's really nice that we can see exactly you know, which years each pistol was made just based on the serial numbers. Now let's go in and do some close-ups of the Red 9 and I'll show you how to spot a fake. So the first thing I want to talk about with Red 9s is the rear sight. I think this is probably the easiest way that you can tell if yours is a legit Red 9 or not. So Red 9s, uh, they start at 50, they go up to 500 meters. Now regular 763 Mausers, um, they went up to 1000 meters. Um, so you can just glance at the top of this. If it goes to 500 and the 500, it's kind of sideways there. Um, you know that this is a, a legit rear sight. And it's probably the biggest giveaway. I've seen quite a bit of Red 9s online that are, you know, that go up to a thousand. So this is another thing that all Red 9 pistols will have. They'll have this little, it looks like an SN. It's really an NS. It stands for new safety. It's, you know, it's obviously new safety in German. Um, so all Red 9s had this new safety. Um, so the safety should have that. Now, just so you know, uh, the new safety uh, it's on the wartime commercial models as well, but it's pretty much just means that um, when the hammer is cocked, you can't just flick the safety on. You actually have to uh, pull the hammer down to disengage it from the sear, and then you can flip the safety on. Uh, it's just something that was added. Uh, you can take the safety off just fine though one-handed. This is a little bit more obscure, but another thing that Red 9 should have, uh, they should have this dual lug uh, firing pin here. So you can see there's a little recess above and below uh, this firing pin that kind of just looks like a flathead screw right, right here. Um, but you want to see this recess at the top and bottom. Um, a lot of the earlier pistols only have one lug, so um, this is something that all Red 9s will have this uh, two lug firing pin. Also something all Red 9s should have is this style of extractor. Something else that some, but I've heard not all, uh, Red 9s will have is this little scallop cut on the follower. I don't know if you could see it right there where the tip of my finger is, this little oval that's cut out on the follower. Um, regular, just 7.63 uh, C96s will just have a flat bottom there, but uh, a lot of Red 9s got the scallop cut on the follower. While I'm up here, I'll go ahead and show you the chamber markings. Um, so your Red 9 should have this Waffenfabrik Mauser Obendorf on top exactly like this. Um, your serial number will be on the left side here, just below it a uh, proof marking here, and if yours was accepted, it will have a government acceptance stamp here on the right side of the chamber. Um, others also will have a marking on the front of the magwell here. Um, not all Red 9s have the little eagle stamp on the front of the magwell and the acceptance. Um, it's optional, but it's a good sign if yours has it, it is a Red 9. Now the left side of Red 9 pistol should be completely devoid of markings that you can see here. Um, there's just no markings at all. Um, now a lot of the commercial C96s will have a little uh, Mauser barrel logo right here in this portion, um, but Red 9 shouldn't have anything. Uh, the only markings that you'll find on a Red 9 on the left or right side is um, right here on the right side. Now it's just the uh, kind of standard uh, Mauser logos. Um, you can tell here in these little cutouts, there's quite a few machining marks. Um, this is a pretty, pretty good telltale signs 
of the, uh, the military contracts. Uh, the German military, they didn't just buy Red 9s. They also bought um, what's called the, the wartime commercial guns that are in 7.63. I think the 7.63 pistols actually outnumber Red 9s, um, especially that actually served in World War I. Um, but if you're looking at a pistol, should be completely devoid of markings on left side and only the one marking there if it's a legit red nine. And we've already talking about it enough. Here is that glorious red nine that's on the grips. Um, so this is burned into the wood and then it's painted red. Um, they do say that um, a lot of red nines won't have these at all. They'll just have the plain grips. Um, I have always really wanted these red, red grips. I think they're really cool. So these are burned in, painted red. Some were painted black apparently. I haven't seen any examples of those. Uh, this is highly, highly faked. Um, you really just kind of have to have a good eye for this. Uh, you can see somebody put CM in this a long, long time ago. Um, if you're gonna buy a Red 9, I think it's a smart idea to just unscrew this. This is the only screw in the whole pistol. Unscrew this, uh, take the grips off, look at the inside, look and see if these are reproduction grips. Um, Cause these are just, they're, they're highly faked grips. These are numbered on the inside as well. So you can see if they match your pistol. If you're gonna buy a Red 9, take these off and look at the inside. Now something that kind of sounds silly, um, you actually wanna count these grooves. There should be either 24 or 25 grooves. Um, this is a 25 groove grip. Um, so you actually want to count this and make sure that it's the correct number of grooves. It's just, it's pretty much always uh, 24 mostly or sometimes 25 like this one. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to be too careful with these. So the Red 9 cost about 80 Reichsmarks per pistol. Now I did a little bit of investigating and uh, before the war, Germans used these uh, solid gold 20 Reichsmarks coins. So let's say uh, the German government paid with these, you know, solid gold coins. Uh, each coin was eight grams of solid gold. So that's four eight gram coins. So it's 32 grams uh, and the current gold price is $43 a gram. So that's 1,376 US dollars today and with today's gold price for a C96. Um, which is kind of surprising. I don't, I don't know, like, because it, it's hard to kind of do currency conversions with, you know, old foreign currencies like that. But this is the closest thing I could find to like how much US currency uh, the German government was paying for those. So that's quite a lot, especially with, you know, 150,000 of them. That was, it's quite an expensive war. So quite a lot of originally 7.63 C96 pistols were converted to nine millimeter on the commercial market for obvious reasons why nine millimeter would be preferable for shooters than 7.63. So you have to be careful just because your C96 chambers nine millimeter, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a red nine just off the bat. You need to check for all the features that I just went over. Uh, be careful when you buy these because there's quite a steep price increase going from a regular 7.63 Mauser to a Red 9, so you need to be really careful. Um, you probably need to buy some books like the Paul Mauser book, something like that. Um, Mauro talked about maybe doing a C96 book sometime in the future. Um, so if, if maybe if enough of us express interest in that, maybe that can help get that project going. I think it'd be great to have a new book because the System Mauser book is pretty outdated. It'd be great if Mauro and the Paul Mauser archive could kind of put their power behind a new comprehensive C96 book. I, I'd really enjoy it and I, I would buy that. If you guys like this video, you have to comment and like and do all that stuff. Um, I think YouTube is starting to suppress a lot of my videos because I'll I kind of will see the spike where my videos are doing really well and all of a sudden they drop off in views. So um, I think YouTube is kind of suppressing controversial and, and gun topics. So if you like this, you just gotta like, you gotta comment and share and do all that stuff. I hate asking, but unfortunately that's the only way that channels like mine can get the information out there on, on old pistols like C96s. So I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Thanks again to Mauro Baudino for coming on and I'll see you guys next time.